Ms. Aravinis Ocampo, a Hospitality Management Instructor. Welcome to my class! A pleasant day to each and every one of you. Welcome to our class, Accommodation Operations Management. So for today's discussion, we are going to talk about supplementary accommodation. So this is in continuation of our past discussion, which is the alternative accommodation. So for the introduction, it says here that hotels have been and will always be the principal form of accommodation. Over the years, there has been a substantial growth and development in the various forms of accommodation. So as mentioned last time in alternative accommodation that hotels, okay? So yung mga hotels na to, ito yung mga una nating nakilalang form of accommodation. And even nowadays, talagang maraming hotels ang namamayagpag sa iba't ibang bansa. Na wherein pinapatronize ito ng mga iba't ibang klaseng turista. So it has been classified on the basis of location, type of construction, or even type of management. It is not easy to classify as different terms have been used to classify the hotels. So as mentioned also during your past subjects that hotels can be classified in different terms. So it can be classified based on the location, it can be classified based on the star category, it can also be classified based on the type of management if it is a franchise hotel, if it is an independent hotel, or it is a chain hotel. So in here, we are going to talk more about what are the supplementary accommodation. So supplementary accommodation, it consists of various accommodations other than the conventional hotel. It could be described as the premises which offer accommodation but not the services of the hotel. So in other um, books, supplementary accommodation is considered as the secondary accommodation for a budget-oriented tourist. Okay? So kung ang primary accommodation natin is hotel, itong supplementary accommodation is the secondary. Now we're in, it is for tourists na kung saan they are merely budgeting. Okay? The type of accommodation na gusto nila. So, establishments under supplementary accommodation are designed to offer accommodation which could possibly of overnight stay and meals in return of payment per day and on the basis of services provided. So, katulad lang din ng mga hotels, itong supplementary accommodation, the same thing. nag offer sila ng overnight stay, nag offer sila ng mga meals and other basic services. And in return, of course, you have to pay those um, inclusions na kinuha mo doon sa particular accommodation. So now, what are the types of supplementary accommodation? So we have the tourist bungalows or the youth hotels. We also have the yatri nivas, country clubs or holiday inns. We also have motels caravans, camping grounds, and tourist camps. We also have railway and airport retiring rooms. We have travelers lodges or boarding house, hotel garni and condominiums, paying guest accommodation, and tourist holiday villages. So one by one, we are going to discuss these types of accommodation. So first one is the motel. So, motels were the easiest form of supplementary accommodation. They were set up to cater the automobile tourists. They provide auto conveniences. So, those are the characteristics of motel. But if we are going back to your past subjects, it has been recognized that motel or the concept of motel was originated in the USA. So, ibig sabihin, sa US, okay, sa United States of America, nagsimula yung konsepto ng paggawa ng ganitong klaseng accommodation, which is the motel. So, basically, motel was meant for local motorists, okay? O tinatawag natin siyang motorist hotel. Para ito sa mga turista na kung saan mahaba na yung kanilang pagta-travel and they need to stay for a while or they need to, um, let's say, book an accommodation along the 
highway or along the road. So they serve the function of transit hotel and accommodate the guests for overnight stay. So in here, we have three types of motels. Kasi normally before, ang alam lang natin, basta motel lang. So first is we have the Roadrunner Lodge Motel. So it is an example of a roadside motel na kung saan matatagpuan natin siya sa Tucumcari, New Mexico. So it, ito yung pinaka-example. So as you can see in the picture, it is recognized as the heart of the mother road. So in here, you will be having an overnight accommodation. They said that it is combined with decisively mid-century modern vibe. And usually, along the road lang siya matatagpuan. Okay? So that is the Roadrunner Lodge Motel, which is an example of a roadside motel. So the next one is the Admiral Resort Motel. So as you can see in the picture, it is a type of motel also, but with the combination of Resort. So, ibig sabihin, may swimming pool, may mga iba't ibang amenities na pwede pang i-offer. Or Admiral Resort Motel, rather, is located in the Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. It is a family-oriented motel. So, ibig sabihin, ang kinikater nila, ang kanilang mga usual guests, is mga families. So, the motel features super-sized three room with an ocean view. And of course, suites accommodating up to 8 people and is one of the block to the beach. So dito makikita natin, they have a large ocean view swimming pool. They also have a kiddie pool and they have a 9-hole mini golf course. So dito sa resort motel na to, meron din silang restaurant wherein it is open from 7 a.m. daily. And meron din silang in-offer na mga breakfast and lunch until 2 p.m. So usually yung dinner nila, it is served 5 nights a week. So from Wednesday to Sunday from 4 to 9 p.m. So marami rin silang mga property amenities, may mga room features din sila, may mga iba't ibang room types, and marami rin silang mga guests na kung saan kinikater nila, which is mga families and then mga Couples. So that is Admiral Resort Motel. So the next one is the Stratford Suburban Hotel. So from the word itself, it is a type of suburban motel. So this Stratford Suburban Motel is basically located in Ontario, Canada. Okay? So it is located in a peaceful country setting on the edge of the town which is five minutes away from the theaters, restaurants and attractions in Stratford. So, ibig sabihin suburban, so medyo malayo siya sa city and medyo ito yung type ng lugar kung saan talagang tahimik walang masyadong mga motorist na mga nagdadaan, walang masyadong mga sasakyan na nagdadaan. So, in here you can stay active walking through the scenic farmland that surrounds or playing a match on a tennis court. They also have a outdoor pool. Meron din silang mga dinner party na hinohos. And of course, they have a beautiful property and stylish and of course, well-appointed rooms. Okay? So that is located in Stratford, Ontario, Canada. The next one is, what are the advantages of putting up a motel? So, motels have helped the tourism industry in face of the challenge of changing trends in tourist behavior. Advantages of motels are as follows. So, we have here, low-cost investment ventures. We also have located where land is cheap. We also have here facilities that offered with low operational cost. So if you are going to put up a motel, hindi siya ganun, um, hindi ganun kataas yung investment na kailangan mo talagang i-put up. Kasi si motels, di ba, ilang rooms lang naman yung um, pwede nating itayo or let's say if you are 
just a starting businessman you can put up a motel with 10 rooms with 20 rooms and it has a low cost investment ventures ibig sabihin hindi ganun kalaking pera yung ilalabas mo kapag nagpatayo ka ng motel because first of all dahil ang concept nga niya is um, ang pinoprovide mo dito mga parking facility garage facility, accommodation, restaurant facility, public catering, and recreational facility. So, ibig sabihin, si motel, hindi siya katulad ni hotels na marami tayong mga amenities and facilities na ipuput up. Minsan, may mga motels na wala naman silang restaurant inside. May mga motels na exclusive lang for an overnight stay pero walang pinoprovide na food. May mga motels naman na wala na silang ibang mga amenities and facilities such as gym, mga, uh, mga swimming pool. So, it depends upon the owner. Kung ano yung mga ipuput up niya doon sa motel na ipapatayo niya. And usually, it is located where the land is cheap. So, hindi ganun kamahalan yung pagpapatayo o yung lupa na pagtatayuan mo ng motel. Because as you can see, meron tayong three types of motel. So, pwede kang mamili. Gusto mo ba na along the road yung motel na ipapatayo mo? Gusto mo ba is malapit sa mga beach area or sa resort area? Or gusto mo is nasa suburban area? So, alam naman natin that if you put up a motel within the city, within the commercial district, talagang mahal. Okay? Mahal talaga yung land. So, facilities offered with low operational cost. Unlike Skay Hotel, na talaga namang yung operational cost is mataas. Because ang dami nating mga dapat na i-consider. ba Yung kuryente, yung maintenance fee, what else? Yung mga, um, let's say, yung mga renovation fee, yung mga cost kapag may nasira sa room. So, unlike kay motel na hindi ganun kalaki. So, kung ano lang yung mga pinutap mo doon, ano lang yung mga amenities and facilities, so usually yun lang yung pagtutuunan mo ng pansin at yun lang yung magiging operational cost mo. So, the next one is the youth hostels or the yatri ni Vas. So, if you search it, it is pronounced as ni Vas. Okay? So, you took to travel on foot or hiking both from the cities as well as the countryside for education, adventure, and recreation. So, marami ngayon sa mga kabataan ang nahihilig sa pagta-travel, ang nahihilig sa pag-hiking, or wherein nahihilig sila na mag-travel sa ibang lugar for educational purposes, for adventure, or for recreation. So, basically, youth hotels provide dormitory accommodation with common bathing and cafeteria facilities. And they also provide kitchens for self catering. So, ito namang si Youth Hotels, it is first appeared in Germany. So, kung si Motel is originated siya sa USA, si Youth, Hotel, youth Hostels naman is originated or first appeared in Germany. So, kung makikita natin dito, we have an example which is the Bern Youth Hostel. So, as you can see in the picture, Burn Youth Hostel is a kind of hostel wherein it is located in the city. And it says here that if you plan activities over lunch or under the trees, including a visit to the square in front of the Federal Parliament Building with its 26 water fountains, the Bear Park and the Polkley Center, the Einstein House or the Arcades in the historic Old Town. So, kapag nag-visit ka daw dito or kapag nag-check-in ka sa Burn Youth Hostel, normally, marami kang makikita ang attraction. Okay? Marami kang mapupuntahan na attraction afterwards. And as you can see also, it is located in Switzerland. Okay? And if you are going to check yung kanilang website, so, they have dorms, yung mga type ng room nila. They have dorms, they have a private room. Now, we're in, yung kanilang mga dorms is nag-range from 2,000 pesos and above. And usually, yung four-person dorm is 2,730.65.
So, ano yung inclusions nun? They have a dorm bed with linen and shared shower and toilet. So, as you can see in the picture, sa isang room, madami. Parang dormitory type. Diba? Parang siyang boarding house yung style. Pero, mas pinasosyal. Okay? Kasi when we say hostel, it is normally um, known as a student hotel. O kaya naman, ito yung klase ng accommodation na para sa mga kabataan, para sa mga taong naghahanap na mga budget accommodation. They also have yung mga private rooms na wherein it range from 6,000 pesos and above. So, 16,000 to 15,000 pesos. So, depende po kung ilang tao ang included doon sa room. Okay? So, that is the Burn Youth Hostels. The next one is the caravans, camping grounds, and tourist camps. So, such facilities are normally located within the cities or in an open spaces. Camps must follow certain regulation regarding the quality of services and costs set up by the municipalities and the serving personnel there require some prior exposure and training to ensure that the tourists get the required facilities. So, dito naman sa caravans, camping grounds, and tourist camps, so most likely yung iba sa atin naranasan ng mag-overnight stay sa mga camping grounds or sa mga tourist camps. Pero ang pinakabago dito is yung tinatawag natin na caravans. So, we have here an example which is the Farnham Leisure Caravan. So, as you can see in the picture, there is a trailer or there is a camper or camper trailer. So, first of all, what is a caravan? So, a caravan is a towed behind a road vehicle to provide a place to sleep which is more portable and protected than a tent. So, usually, si caravan, ginagamit siya ng mga grupo, okay? Grupo ng mga turista na wherein they are traveling for a, let's say, a purpose. Kung baga, they are traveling together, meron silang journey na tinatahak, and most likely, sinasabi dyan, it is more comfortable than putting up a tent. Kasi, si caravan is... Andiyan na lahat. Kung baga, sasakyan siya, tapos meron kang um, may bed ka, may mga amenities and facilities ka inside the caravan or inside the trailer. So, as you can see, ito yung mga madalas natin makita kapag nanonood tayo ng mga Hollywood movies or mga movies from other countries. So, ayan, nakikita natin na meron silang spacious bed. Okay? They have a lot of amenities and facilities inside. So, meron ding mga air condition unit, meron din silang uh, mini sofa, meron ding mga furnitures and fixtures na naka-install. And, syempre, you can stop by sa mga areas and you can also relax, ayan, put up your chairs outside and emerge, di ba, sa nature. But, basically, sino nga ba si Farnham Leisure Caravan. So basically, it is a family-run business located in the heart of the village of Farnham. So they are um, doing this business for eight years, and sinasabi nila dito na they have a vast selection of used caravans. So you can visit their site, farmhamleisure.co.uk. So it, they are located in the United. Kingdoms. The next one is the Railway and Airport Retiring Rooms. So, ano naman si Railway and Airport Retiring Rooms? So, the purpose of retiring room accommodation is to offer a convenience to the traveler without going into the city. They are situated at the main platform of major railway station and at domestic and international airports. They also provide accommodation to railway passengers holding confirmed and current tickets or air passengers from out of town or in transit. So we have here an example which is the Indian Railways Retiring Room. So kung makikita nyo dyan, it has to provide the best services to its 
passenger. So one of the many services provided by the Indian Railways is the returning room facility. So kung, kung kagagaling mo lang sa ibang lugar, di ba? Kung kagagaling mo lang sa ibang destination, usually you can stay in this particular accommodation para magpahinga. So it is known to provide different retiring room services to the passengers across various stations in the country. So if you want to know more about the retiring room facilities, then you are in the right place. So if ever you will visit India, ayan, you can stay in the Indian Railways retiring room. Of course, they also have different policies na we're in um, the rates for the booking and cancellation of the retiring room facility has been published by the Indian Railways. So, syempre, ang pinaprioritize nila dyan dahil isa siyang railway retiring room, so they prioritize the safety of the passengers. So, the next one is the traveler's lodges and boarding houses. So, these are the modest hotels situated away from the center of the city or at the remote destination. They are self-sufficient establishments offering standard facilities and some extend their services to telecommunication and postal facilities. Their maintenance and services need to be upgraded and the tariff structure has to be more flexible. So, ano naman tong traveler's lodges or boarding house na tinatawag? So, a lot of you are familiar with the boarding houses. And usually, may mga boarding house located in the city, okay? So, which is, yun yung familiar tayo. And may mga boarding house or traveler's lodge naman na located in the remote destination. So, when we say remote, ito yung mga lugar na medyo malalayo na. Okay, mga rural areas na mga ito yung malayo sa syudad, malayo sa mga shopping centers, sa mga malls. And they offer standard facilities. So, other boarding houses, di ba, may mga telecommunications such as for example, may mga telephone, may mga postal facilities na we're in, pwedeng gamitin ng mga tao na naka-check-in doon or yung mga tao na nag avail ng services with corresponding charges. And syempre, alam naman natin na kapag nakatira ka sa boarding house, if there are maintenance, if there are services na kailangan gawin, usually, nag increase din yung bayad natin sa boarding house. Ibig sabihin na dadagdagan. So, we have here an example which is the Traveler's Lodge located in Tanzania. So, yan ang kanyang example. So, as you can see, it is near um, the beach. Ayan, makikita natin na malapit tayo sa nature para tayong nasa isang resort or beach hotel. But ang tawag sa kanya is the Traveler's Lodge. So, si Traveler's Lodge, it is basically situated in a white sand beach in Bagamoyo, Tanzania. So, step from room into the warm Indian Ocean and enjoy the timeless views of enchanting those and Bagamoyo's historical buildings. So, dito makikita nyo, you can choose to stay kung sa beach or sa garden cottage. Okay, makikita nyo, there are tropical gardens and they also have restaurant na kung saan they are also offering local and international dishes. Yung kanilang mga staff is very friendly. They have a comfortable bar and of course, ang kanilang lodge is a family-friendly accommodation. So, sa kanila, they speak German and English. So, that is an example of a traveler's lodge. So, for the boarding house, we have here the Brighton College Boarding House. So, sa ibang bansa, meron din naman silang tinatawag na boarding house. So, this is an example ng picture. So, as you can see, it is a boarding house wherein they cater students, okay? So, ang kanilang mga um, kinikater, ang kanilang mga sineservisyohan dito is mga estudyante. So, it says here that student accommodation is provided in one to two or three bedroom dormitories with each student having their own study area. So, sa ibang pansa kasi, 
very formal yung kanilang boarding house. As you can see sa loob ng boarding house, meron na silang study area. Okay, which is yun yung pinaka-purpose. Kumbaga, malapit ka sa school and then hindi mo na kailangan lumabas ng school para mag-study or mag-aral. Doon, mismo sa boarding house na tinutuluyan mo is pwede ka nang mag-study. So, the third floor includes a stunning new common room with kitchen area and dormer window looking out over the college courtyard. So, kung makikita nyo, yung architectural design also is very unique, very um, old-fashioned. Pero, marami silang mga estudyante na nag-check-in. Or marami mga estudyante ang nag a sa mga ganitong klaseng boarding house. The next one is the hotel, garni, and condominiums. So, these units provide bed and breakfast and supplement accommodation in big cities. They provide a single tourist with company, a family atmosphere, and home cooking which makes for a relaxed holiday with no formal dress code, public areas and behavior, and no extra cost. So, when we say Hotel Garni, it is a type of hotel okay, that offers accommodation along with the breakfast and drinks and snacks. Pero, hindi siya yung katulad ng mga ibang klaseng hotel. So, meron siyang touch of a classical um, feature. And as you can see, basically, they have a furnished apartment na uso siya noong mid-18th century. And sinasabi dito that it is a hotel accommodation structure which provides its guests with overnight stay and breakfast. That is why nakalagay dyan, parang katulad lang din siya ng mga bed and breakfast hotel. Kaya lang, naka-under na siya sa supplementary accommodation. So, in here, most likely located sila or walking distance lang sa mga main attraction within the city. And yung kanilang um, itsura, they have a architectural structure, Merong architectural significance and most likely is kinikater nila yung iba't ibang mga klaseng turista. So, this involves ownership of a suite or an apartment. So, as you can see here, the Hotel Garni, Austria. So, the Hotel Garni, Austria is basically located in Austria or Westendorf, Austria. So, sinasabi dito that it is a family-friendly small hotel and it is a nice option for a lot of travelers. So, para ang pinaka-mantra nila dito is a home away from home. So, dito we can um, access or we can even book a small hotel rooms with a seating area and a desk. And of course, um, online or getting online is easy because they have a free Wi-Fi. And, of course, a lot of guests um, offers um, free breakfast or a lot of guests is availing yung mga free breakfast dito sa Hotel Garni, Austria. And, they have a free parking for the guests. And, their hotel style is a mid-range to family. And, it is good to know that this Hotel Garni, Austria is a three-star Hotel. They have two types of rooms. They have the non-smoking room and the smoking rooms. And they even have a golf course. Ayan. Pet-friendly yung kanilang mga hotel. And they offer also property amenities such as babysitting, bicycle rental. They have a free parking and then airport transportation. Okay, so that is the Hotel Garni, Austria. Now we have an example of a condominium which is the Discovery Primea. So as you can see in the picture, when we say condominium, it is basically a large property complex which is divided into individual units and sold. So ito yung mga malalaking buildings na we're in, they are selling a particular unit kung sino yung gustong mag-avail and kapag nabili mo no, Kapag nabili mo yon sa yun na yung unit. And yung ibang mga tao, nagbibili sila ng mga condominium units and later on, pinaparent nila sa ibang mga turista. 
So as you can see in the picture, which is the Discovery Primea. So Discovery Primea is located within the city of Makati, a 68-story luxury hotel in Metro Manila's iconic Central Business District. So in here, makikita nyo na ang dami niyang mga amenities and facilities na ino-offer na wherein pwede natin siyang pag-istaya ng matagal. Kasi alam naman natin, mga, pag mga condominium, mga residences, you can even stay for a week, for a month, or even rent the unit. So they have a 140-room deluxe hotel, which is um, home of the famous restaurants. Ayan, so meron silang mga in-offer na mga spa, may infinity pool silang in-offer. As you can see in the picture, they also have um, gymnasium or fitness gym na tinatawag. They have the Turkish bath. And most likely, they're also offering mga discounts sa kanilang mga guests. So for more information, you can visit discoveryhotels-resorts.com. So, the next one is the paying guest accommodation. So, ito bago sa ating pandinig, si paying guest accommodation. So, ano nga ba si paying guest accommodation? So, many tourists prefer homestays to institutional accommodation and this brings in the concept of paying guest accommodation offered by individual households at Destination. So, substantial bed capacity can be created through linking private households with tourism demand for accommodation. So, basically, si paying guest accommodation is the ability for the guest to rent a portion of a house from the owner or landlord. So, ibig sabihin, paying guest. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo nirerentahan yung entire space ng no accommodation. You are simply renting a room. Okay? So, parang kung sa Pilipinas natin to i-relate, -re ito yung mga bed spacer. Okay? O yung mga bed spacing unit. So, other term for this is the PG or the paying guest. So, dito makikita natin na you are basically taking a part, okay, of the house or renting a part of the house na kung saan dapat may permiso ni landlord, may permiso ni owner. So, dito sinasabi natin, legal daw ba yung paying guest stays? So, it is legal as long as the tenant is protected under the law and has more rights as of the owner by possession of the rented property. So, si paying guest they can be provided also with food, with laundry facilities, bed, and electricity. So, parang kung bed spacer ka, di ba, um, yung bed lang yung babayaran mo. And most likely, kung may laundry facilities doon, pwede kang maglaba. Kung may in-offer na pagkain, pwede kang umorder. So, kung wala, so you can buy outside the accommodation. So, bakit daw siya tinawag na paying guest? Because, sabi dito, it is a person who lodges in another's house, lodger or roomer. So, para anong nangyayari dito? Para kang tenant. Okay? Para kang um, turista, pero yung room lang. Okay? Yung specific room at specific bed lang yung babayaran mo. And some travelers, ganito yung ina-avail nila. Kasi hindi naman nila goal na magstay sa mga mamahaling hotel, sa mga mamahaling resort hotels. Ang goal nila is may mapag-stayan lang. And then, they will spend their money to basically visit yung mga iba't ibang attractions doon sa lugar. So, we have here, Tain Paying Guest Accommodation. Ayan, ganyan yung itsura niya. So, ibig sabihin, share kayo sa isang room. So, kung may mga other tourists na, na nakabook sa particular bed and then may bakanti pa, so pwede ka ditong ilagay ni landlord or pwede ka niya ditong i-book. So, si Tain Paying Guest Accommodation is located in India. Ayan. So, kung makikita nyo, um, they are one of the service provider ng mga ganitong klaseng accommodation. So, 
At the same time, all those interested in developing the paying guest accommodation should do it in a professional way, taking into account. So, if you are a kind of businessman na gusto mong mag-invest sa ganitong klaseng accommodation, gusto mong magpatayo ng paying guest accommodation, number one is you should consider health and hygiene. Since there are a lot of people or a lot of tourists inside the room, let's say, ang room mo is, ang capacity niya is six persons, so ibig sabihin, lalo na ngayon na may pandemic, hindi mo pwedeng um, ipabook yon in a 100% full capacity. Okay? You should consider yung health, yung social distancing, yung hygiene, kasi paano mamaya kung yung tourist na nag-book sa particular room na yon, may sakit pala. Diba? May nakakahawa palang sakit. So, paano naman yung iba pa niyang mga kasama sa room? So, kung mapapansin ninyo sa Pilipinas, kapag mga ganitong bed spacing unit, mga boarding house, ganun, so kung babae, puro babae lang yung nasa loob ng room. And then, may separate rooms para sa mga lalaki. So, proper toilet facilities, of course, kasi common um, toilet yung gagamitin ng mga taong magche-check-in or mag avail ng ganitong klaseng accommodation. So, may mga bed spacing unit or may mga paying guest accommodation na isa lang yung toilet na pinoprovide pero anim kayo sa room, tatlo kayo sa room. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, you should provide yung mga necessary bathroom amenities, decor of the room. So, as you can see in the previous picture, meron din namang decoration kahit papano. Okay, may television na nakalagay, may aircon. Yung iba naman, they are not providing air conditioning unit but an electric fan. O yung iba naman, nagpo-put up na mga paintings, mga frame. So, it depends upon the owner. And of course, eating facilities. So, meron ka bang pinaprovide na dining area? Okay, doon sa mismong accommodation unit mo? O wala? So, kasi minsan, may mga... Um, paying guest accommodation or may mga boarding house or mga bed spacing unit na you are not allowed to eat inside the room you are not allowed to cook kasi ang pinoprovide lang nila is accommodation kumbaga overnight stay lang mag stay ka lang, matutulog ka lang so in that case you have also to consider these four factors if ever you're interested to develop or put up a paying guest accommodation so, the last one is the tourist holiday villages. So, these villages are situated at warm seaside and in the regions which can offer certain facilities for the tourists. So, the village complex is the center of accommodation which provides extensive sports, recreational facilities, riding, swimming, tennis, volleyball, football, sauna, um, mini golf, badminton, table tennis, and yoga. So, kung tayo naman is as a family, di ba, magbabakasyon tayo, at alam naman natin na yung mga kasama natin is mahilig sa sports, mahilig sa mga recreational um, activity, we can accommodate or we can even book a village complex or a holiday villages. So, they provide boarding and lodging. The atmosphere is kept as informal. Okay, kumbaga wala tayong masyadong mga strict protocols inside the holiday villages because sa dami ng mga recreational activities, pwede natin lahat yon gamitin. So, the holiday villages are usually based on family units kasi di ba madamihan. And it provides a convertible living room, bath or shower, and sometimes kitchen. Di ba minsan pag marami tayo na magta-travel as a family, Yung iba natutulog na sa sala, di ba natutulog na sa living room, tapos nagpo-provide tayo ng mga extra bed, para nang sa ganun, sama-sama as a family. So, the villages are self-sufficient, providing almost all the necessities required by the residents. So, since nasa isang village ka, imagine ninyo, nasa isang village kayo, hindi nyo na kailangan lumabas pa para bumili ng mga kung ano-anong ang pagkain because inside the village, nag offer na sila ng mga food. Kaya may mga restaurant, sometimes may mga convenient um, store pa sila inside the um, villages. So, in here, we have an example which is the Atlantica Holiday Village Roads. Ayan. 
So as you can see in the picture, um, talagang kitang-kita na malapit sila sa mountains. Kitang-kita din na may mga other recreational activities such as yung swimming pool, mga water activities, meron silang mga cottages if ever you want to have a sunbathing. So this holiday village is basically located in Colombia, Greece. Okay, so sa Greece siya matatagpuan. And according to Trip Advisor, so it says here that it is a family-oriented holiday village. And sinasabi dito that the hotel is split into three areas named Activity, Relax, and Deluxe. Offering exactly what it says on the tin. So this place comes highly recommended by guests and boasts an opulent variety of dining options to keep everyone happy. So as you can see in the picture, they have an on-site water park that during the day and relax with your favorite people in the evening enjoying a top class show at night. So ibig sabihin sa gabi may mga night show din sila, meron din silang mga band para mas ma-entertain yung mga turista. So in here they also have different property amenities, they have pool, they have a water park, they have a fitness center, tennis court, what else? Um, they also have different room types, non-smoking rooms, sweet room, and a family room. So basically, the si Atlantica Holiday Village is a family resort that is located in Greece. So that's the end of our presentation about the supplementary accommodation. So if ever you miss some points in the lesson video, please feel free to replay it in YouTube. Thank you so much for listening and have a nice day.